the way, this got my attention from the chat box. Jim will says, are millennials attention seeker? Firstly, I think that wanting to seek attention can be universal regardless of your age. But I will say that today's technology enables people to seek more attention because you now have a bigger range of audiences to expose yourself to. So when you have in your mindset that you can post something on Instagram Live or Facebook Live or on TikTok, for example, that breeds a mentality that you can get audiences and therefore you want to crave for more attention. So yes, millennials are not intrinsically seeking attention, but they live in an environment that allows them to do so. Right? Of course, I also have friends who really are just like that. So take it with a grain of salt. It's always a balance of things. All right. Second, this is the last part, guys, now before we go for a Q&A. Empowerment yields engagement. We have a tendency to micromanage younger employees because we think they are less experienced. We think that might, they might commit mistakes. We think that the quality is not at par with our standards of quality. And so we want to handhold them all the time. We have a tendency to dictate the font size the margins, oh my gosh, the PowerPoint template, or down to the spill. I'm still guilty of this, by the way. But we also have to understand that at some point, if they have proven credibility, they have proven that they can do things on their own, we have to let them go. Why? Because the human nature is to always look for autonomy. Human nature is own if you think it's for your own betterment. All right, so we call this, by the way, in the corporate world as the IKEA effect. So if you've been to IKEA, and I love IKEA, there's going to be IKEA in the Philippines, uh, which I'm so insecure because IKEA is almost everywhere now. Uh, there's a big IKEA store in Damansara, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, in Hong Kong alone, there are three IKEA stores, all easily uh, by train, for example. So it's called IKEA effect because remember, Ikea is a store that sells furniture and a lot of these can be assembled and that's why they're cheap because you have to assemble them on your own. So in Ikea, they've noticed that when people assemble chairs and furniture on their own, even if it's not good looking um, furniture, they think it's the best furniture in town. Why? Because they spent their own sweat and blood in doing so. That's called the Ikea effect. When we're given the ability to be autonomous independent, doing things on our own, we love what we do, all right? Because it makes us feel that we are valued, we are important, and that people do not dictate how things are. So we think that something is of higher value versus its real value when we take part in building it. All right, so therefore, here's the last part. Empowering means giving space for flexibility. Flexibility, for example, if you can, as much as possible. Flexibility of time. Flexibility of rewards. Flexibility of roles. When I say time, do not micromanage that your direct report millennial has to be back in his cubicle by 1 p.m. after lunch. All right? I think we live in a time today where in, if we are in a good mood continuing working until 1 p.m., and we're on a great mood to finish a project, we will do so and we will finish our lunch later on. That's fine as long as you don't disrupt the operations of the company. And if you can empower your millennial to dictate their time at work, why not? That's empowerment. That's flexibility. Same thing for rewards. We consult for a lot of companies in Southeast Asia. And one of the companies we've really loved, um, I can't share the name of the company, but this company offers flexibility for their millennial employees. If you're not yet a, if you're not yet pregnant or you're not you don't have any options or you don't have any plans of getting pregnant and if pregnant women for example get financial benefits if you are a single employee and a millennial you will get the same amount of financial benefit the equivalent of it so you can spend it on something else gadgets travel etc. So that's part of rewards. Millennials love it when they can encash their sick leaves, for example, because they know that they're healthy and that they will still continue showing up to work. So might as well encash that money so that they can spend it on something else. And finally, flexibility is also about roles. 
So if I succeed in this role, what other opportunities can I take? One of the companies I've talked to last year was Shell Malaysia. And I love the philosophy of Shell Malaysia. And this also happens in Shell Philippines and Shell Indonesia. They have this unspoken rule that after four years, you now have the ability to work in a different department that you think can hone your skills. Because if you've been staying in that company for in that department for too long, you might get bored or you've mastered things already and that you are not improving your skills. So I love that because you're offering opportunities for them to go somewhere else without necessarily leaving the organization. So the flexibility of roles, if I'm from finance, can I move to marketing? Because I've changed, I had a change of heart. If I'm from sales, can I go to operations? Because something struck in me that made me feel more interested now in that role, for example, right? So that is flexibility and that's empowerment. Take it with a grain of salt. I understand that companies have their own, how do you call this, your own limits. And I get that. So baby steps if you're not there, you're not yet in that level. But the point is, it is not a one-way street. It is a two-way street. You have to listen to what your millennials also want so that they can stay longer in your company organization.